Imagine living in a city where you can get around easily by public transport, enjoy the greenery and nature in every corner, and benefit from the visionary and innovative policies of your government. Sounds like a dream, right? Well, for the residents of Singapore, this is a reality. Singapore is widely regarded as one of the best examples of urban design in the world. Urban design is the process of shaping the physical and social aspects of a city to make it more livable, sustainable, and attractive. It involves planning, designing, and managing the buildings, streets, parks, public spaces, and infrastructure of a city. Urban design affects how we experience and interact with our urban environment. It influences our health, happiness, productivity, and well-being. But not all cities are designed equally. Some cities face many challenges and problems due to poor or outdated urban design. One such city is New York. New York is one of the most famous and influential cities in the world. It is a global center of culture, finance, media, and entertainment. It is also home to more than 8 million people from diverse backgrounds and cultures. However, New York also suffers from many issues related to urban design. Its public transportation system is inefficient, unreliable, and expensive. Its greenery and biodiversity are limited, unevenly distributed, and under threat. Its governance and policies are often short-sighted, reactive, and divisive. In this video, we will explore why New York needs to learn from Singapore's flawless design. We will compare and contrast the urban design of these two cities in terms of public transportation, greenery, governance and policies. We will show how Singapore's urban design principles and practices can help New York improve its livability, sustainability, and competitiveness. We will also provide some recommendations and suggestions for New York to adopt or adapt some of Singapore's urban design strategies or solutions. So stay tuned and let's dive into this fascinating topic. transportation is one of the most essential aspects of urban design, affecting how people move around the city, how much time and money they spend on travel, how safe and comfortable they feel, and how much they contribute to the environment. A good public transportation system should be efficient, accessible, and affordable. However, not all cities have good public transportation systems, and there is a huge gap between cities like New York and Singapore in this regard. New York's public transportation system is outdated, fragmented, and unreliable, ranking 23rd out of 27 major cities in the world in terms of efficiency. Its subway system is over 100 years old and suffers from frequent delays, breakdowns, and overcrowding. Its bus system is slow and unreliable due to traffic jams and poor management. Its commuter rail system is expensive and underutilized. In contrast, Singapore's public transportation system is one of the most efficient in the world, ranking third out of 27 major cities in terms of efficiency. Its subway system is modern and well-maintained, with trains running every few minutes and arriving on time. Its bus system is fast and reliable, with dedicated lanes and smart technology. Its commuter rail system is affordable and convenient, connecting the city with the suburbs and neighboring countries. Accessibility is another key aspect of a good public transportation system. New York's public transportation system is not very accessible, with its subway system not covering many parts of the city, especially in the outer boroughs and low-income neighborhoods. Its bus system does not operate 24-7 and has limited routes and stops. Its commuter rail system does not integrate well with other modes of transport. It is also not very inclusive for people with disabilities or special needs, with only about a quarter of its subway stations being wheelchair accessible. In contrast, Singapore's public transportation system is very accessible. Its subway system covers almost every part of the city, reaching both urban and rural areas. Its bus system operates 24-7 and has extensive routes and stops. 
its commuter rail system integrates seamlessly with other modes of transport. It is also very inclusive for people with disabilities or special needs, with all of its subway stations being wheelchair accessible, and most of its buses and trains having facilities and information for people with disabilities or special needs. Finally, affordability is an important factor for public transportation users. New York's public transportation system is not very affordable, with subway and bus fares among the highest in the world, costing $2.75 per ride. Its commuter rail fares are also expensive, varying by distance and time. Its public transportation system does not offer many subsidies or discounts for low-income or vulnerable groups, such as students, seniors, or veterans. Its public transportation system is also heavily dependent on taxes and debt for its funding, which makes it vulnerable to budget cuts and deficits. On the other hand, Singapore's public transportation system is very affordable, with subway and bus fares among the lowest in the world, ranging from $0.77 cents to $2.02 .02 per ride. Its commuter rail fares are also reasonable, varying by distance and time. Its public transportation system offers many subsidies or discounts for low-income or vulnerable groups, such as students, seniors, or persons with disabilities. Its public transportation system is also largely self-financed by its operators, making it more resilient and efficient. Urban design must include greenery to enhance the beauty and benefits of nature, preserve and enhance biodiversity and ecosystem services, offer green space and recreation opportunities, and mitigate and adapt to climate change. While Singapore boasts abundant, diverse, well-maintained, and multifunctional greenery, New York's greenery is scarce, homogeneous, neglected, and underutilized. Let's compare and contrast the greenery and biodiversity of these two cities in terms of quantity, quality, distribution, and function. Quantity-wise, New York's greenery and biodiversity are limited. Its vegetation cover is only about 21% of its land area, and its species richness is about 2,000 native plants and animals. Singapore's greenery and biodiversity, on the other hand, are impressive in quantity, with vegetation cover about 47% of its land area, and species richness of about 40,000 native plants and animals. Quality-wise, New York's greenery and biodiversity are low quality, with a limited variety of species, mostly consisting of non-native and invasive plants and animals, often unhealthy, damaged, or diseased. In contrast, Singapore's greenery and biodiversity are of high quality, with a rich variety of species, including many native and endemic plants and animals, healthy, resilient, and adaptive to the tropical climate and urban conditions, and well-maintained. Distribution-wise, New York's greenery and biodiversity are unevenly and poorly distributed across the city, with a high degree of land use and urban density, leading to unequal access to green space, especially for low-income and minority neighborhoods. In contrast, Singapore's greenery and biodiversity are evenly and widely distributed across the city, with a low degree of land use and urban density, guided by a long-term vision and a holistic approach, providing equal access to green space for all neighborhoods, regardless of income or ethnicity. Urban governance and policies are crucial to urban design. They determine how a city is managed, regulated, and led and affects stakeholder collaboration, problem-solving, and opportunity exploitation. Effective governance and policies are essential for good urban design, and should be visionary, proactive, collaborative, innovative, and efficient. However, there is a significant disparity between New York and Singapore in terms of governance and policies. New York's governance and policies are short-sighted, reactive, divisive, conservative, and inefficient, while Singapore's governance and policies are visionary, proactive, collaborative, innovative, and effective. The differences between the two cities can be compared and contrasted in terms of vision, leadership, collaboration, innovation, and implementation. 
New York lacks a comprehensive and coherent master plan for its urban development, and its vision is often influenced by short-term political agendas or market forces. Singapore's vision for its urban design is clear, consistent, and well aligned with its values and challenges. New York's complex and fragmented system of authorities and institutions often creates confusion, duplication, and inefficiency, while Singapore's simple and unified system of authorities and institutions creates clarity, coordination, and efficiency. New York's collaboration for its urban design is limited, inaccessible, or biased, and often faces resistance, opposition, or conflict from stakeholders and partners. Singapore's collaboration for its urban design is diverse, accessible, and inclusive, and often enjoys support, cooperation, or partnership from stakeholders and partners. We have come to the end of this video, where we explored why New York needs to learn from Singapore's flawless design. We compared and contrasted the urban design of these two cities in terms of public transportation, greenery, governance, and policies. We showed how Singapore's urban design principles and practices can help New York improve its livability, sustainability, and competitiveness. Learning from Singapore's urban design can benefit New York in many ways. It can enhance the mobility and equity of its residents by providing them with efficient, accessible, affordable, safe, and environmentally friendly public transportation. It can improve the health and happiness of its residents by providing them with abundant, diverse, well-maintained, and multifunctional greenery and biodiversity. It can boost the productivity and innovation of its residents by providing them with visionary, proactive, collaborative, innovative, and effective governance and policies. Of course, New York cannot simply copy or transplant Singapore's urban design solutions. New York has its own unique history, culture, geography, and challenges. However, New York can adopt or adapt some of Singapore's urban design strategies or solutions that are relevant and applicable to its context. For example, New York can invest more in upgrading and expanding its public transportation system. It can create more green spaces and corridors in its urban fabric. It can develop a long-term and holistic master plan for its urban development. It can engage and consult its stakeholders and partners more actively and meaningfully for its urban design decisions. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Also, feel free to share your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.